Uh, Steve, uh, Everton got their first win against West Ham, so uh, they're going into the international break completely the opposite to us uh, on a bit of a high. And I actually didn't realise they're quite tough to beat recently as well. Before today's win, it was four draws in a row, one of which against Liverpool as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah they'll, they'll be on a bit of a high, won't they? Um, yeah, you imagine so, but their away record has been, I mean, much like us, has been awful um, for a considerable, considerable period of time now. Um and as a general rule, they've not got a particularly good record at St Mary's um, historically. So it's what it's a game that we should be targeting to win. Um, I'm, I mean, I've, I've said this many, many times on this podcast. I'm wholly unconvinced by Frank Lampard as a top top level manager. Um, but then, much as I am by Steven Gerrard, and he's just gone and got a mm. win against us. So that's where we are. Um, yeah, someone someone's got to step up. Um, in two weeks' time, in that game, um, I mean Everton, Everton have, I mean, somehow spent spent a load of money when they spent the whole summer saying, "Oh, we haven't got any money," um, which was was an interesting flex at the end of the transfer window. Um, but again, those players are going to take a little bit of time to gel, um, so you've got to kind of pick up the those sort of small little little uh, crumbs of comfort where you can and. I think they're they're a team that we've that we've got a good opportunity against. Um, don't know if Pickford's going to be going to be fit for them by by the end of the in, international break. I assume he probably will be, but um, I mean Begovic has always been been a bit of a pain in the ass for us, hasn't he? Um, his uh, <laughs> his various previous clubs. Um, but I think, as I say, they're they're a team that can be got at. Um, but they've they've had a relatively kind kind run of games lately. West Ham look looking just really out of sorts at the moment um obviously extra games in in midweek in the in the conference league not helping them um you suspect um also a couple of big name signings that they're trying to integrate and not quite getting the balance right at the moment i suspect um but yeah i, th- I think that as i say they 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 should be there for the taking and i would be surprised if we go into that game as underdogs I think we are. I mean, we we're not awful at home. We've been. I mean, certainly this season we've been pretty good in our in our barring the first barring that fifteen twenty minute spell against against Leeds. Um, we've been we've been decent at, at home so far. So hopefully, um, pick up on that bit more intensity. Um, just be a little bit more creative, a bit braver, as as Glenn's Glenn said a few times this evening. Um, it's yeah you you're not going to get away with being as passive as we were on friday night in a home game because the fans will get up will get very quickly get on the players backs for it and then all of a sudden the atmosphere turns turns a little bit toxic and then you're in a, you're in a whole um different uh, different pot of problems glenn who would you like to see in and who out for this one uh, you, can only, what? you can't pick 11 <laughs> well, if you take the if you take the team that that started the game against against um, Villa, you know the the number tens is the issue for me. Um, I mean, I thought hopefully Maitland Niles in two weeks can work out how to play in central midfield um, in this finely tuned setup that we've got. Um, so that would be the first one, and though I did say that last week. Uh, the the number tens you've got you got the three that played on on the Friday and then you've got a dozy Stuart Armstrong and a Rebo. Yeah. Now to me, two of those three have got to play. Um personally I'd go for probably for Stuart Armstrong and a Rebo. Mm-hmm. And but look to you know if it, if it's not working then you, you get a dozy on certainly for the last half an hour. Not leave it for the last sort of ten minutes. If we if we need a goal either to you know claw the game back um would it be too, it'd probably be too brave to start all three of them um but you know Ever- everton at home why not they're they're a kind of dull outfit they're solid but they're they're dull there's nothing you know again this is the old famous last words things they're not the sort of team that's going to tear you apart they've got mope and anthony gordon up front it's not it's not exactly the world's most threatening attack but they're you know they're a solid team. They got the um they got the guy back from Paris, didn't they? Garner Gay. They got him back. Yep. He's decent. 
Um, they've got another midfielder, Anana, who's another one they signed. Like Steve said, how, how did they sign him? He was mm. they spent thirty million or something mm. on him for a team that has no money. Um, Cody and Tarkovsky at the back, they're, they're solid, unspectacular mm. but solid. So it's so maybe it, maybe it is a game to to say to a dozy, go on, run at them from the first minute and and see how it goes. But um, Hopefully, hopefully we lean more towards that than the the sort of pragmatism, which ultimately didn't work at all uh, from Friday. Well, it's uh, it's predictions time. Uh, so uh, looking at the table at the moment for the predictions so far this season, Glenn is uh, is top with eight points so far <laughs> from the, uh, the, the seven <laughs> games. Uh, for the Villa game, Martin was the only one to get three points. Uh, he predicted a 1-0 to Villa. Uh, ben and Jacob got one point for the right result there too. Steve, only on one point at the bottom. At the moment. Hold it, <laughs> holding everyone up. What's going on, Steve? <laughs> Strong, strongest team at the bottom, holding everyone up. That's, that's fine. Strongest um, stable. Yeah. Um, uh, it's... Just kind of go, goes to show that we're we're just absolutely impossible to predict at the moment. It's yes. we're just you can't can't rely on us. I mean, any, anybody who puts put puts actual money on on any of our results <laughs> week by week, um, absolute mugs game. <laughs> okay, well we, we, let's go around and get some predictions for uh, for Everton in a couple of weeks' time. Then, Alfie, what are you going for here? I'm tossing up between two nil and two one to Southampton. I feel like the clean sheet's got to come at some point and I'm going to lean into it. I'm going to say 2-0. Okay, he's going 2-0. What about you, Glenn? Top of the table, Glenn? Uh, oh, no pressure. Similarly, similar, similarly to Alfie, I, you know, defensively, I think we're getting there. Um, I think it will be a horrendous game and I think we will win it 1-0. So it won't similar... be as bad, not as bad as Villa, though. No, it can't be that bad, but <laughs> in a similar sort of way, we'll play as badly as Villa did and just about sneak it, I'm hoping. So I'll go for 1-0 for us. What about you, Steve? You need some points. Yeah, I, mean, I kind of, yeah, I, I, I mean, I was initially going to go 2-0 and then I was going to go 1-0 and both those were taken. But no, um, no, no, I no, my colours... Initial original colours to the master. I'll also go with two nil. I just think that that clean sheet's got to come eventually. Bounce of probability, um, and for once we might just get the might just get the bounce of the ball fall for us in front mm. of goal. That'd be nice. 